Welcome back to Interview with the Vampire. I've been really enjoying this season, so I'm hoping I start getting some answers to my burning questions. With the voice that can be heard. <laughs> I'm with you, Louis. <laughs> what? It's very cute, but I feel like this being her act, just being forced to play a, a child, and that's exactly what you don't want to be. Coven life requires a letting go she of the self. She carried her water uphill her like a seasoned player. With it. Check, check, check. Okay. Check, check. Oh. What? Not what I was expecting. Where are the canopies? <laughs> Rather disturbing. God. How did the coven take it? Mostly with good grace. They were better. <laughs> they were better. Like I hate my mortal foe. Oh, <laughs> Those are my notes, but. By the 500th performance, Claudio was beyond bored. Lackluster, bromidic, unacceptable. Didn't take long for her to get bored with that. To the company, why the 500th performance of I think I prefer backstage work. Sam? Yes, Mater? Fair enough. What are you holding in your hand? You'll no longer remove your costume. You'll sleep in it. Rehearsing. What? Feeding it, hunting it. You live with Dude, that's cruel. Stage until she returns to you. On and yet the audience sang along in full voice. Oh dear. And the infection spread was a year and a half ago. When a certain vampire was granted dispensation from cover membership. It's Louis, I got a name. Louis takes all the proper <laughs> He's like, I'm right here, guys. He reads books during blood sabbath. I'll loan it to you when I'm done. Huh. This is not about me. <laughs> God damn, calm down. Grace? Florence. Grace was my sister. Well. Good try, though. You don't talk about your mother very much. No. Yeah, well, she was awful. Okay, if you don't remember her name. I love you. <laughs> Lestat, shut up. I'm sort of with you, but shut up. <laughs> you promised you wouldn't talk. I love you. I love you. <laughs> Until then, you only have Daniel Malloy. He was my biographer. What is that therapist. moment they keep cutting back to? But looking back on it now, oh. I can understand it. Hmm. Seems like you might be a little upset about it. I was. So you weren't provided any information about the fire in our archives. Oh shit. Come on, man. How could you make a mistake like that? Random thoughts is a habit. Read me some. Feeling a lot of tension here. This feels like it's going to turn into a threat. Oh. <laughs> and thank you for the kind words you wrote about me. How? Do you How? I read it just now, right in front of me. Windows when they close, I be where be. As you should. Ton corps était pas encore formé, mais ton esprit déjà sophistiqué. Puis tu souriais pas. Funny, you made no impression on me at all. <laughs> your French is still ugly, like your dowlot shit. I agree. I just wouldn't say it because it's rude and obvious. <laughs> Wait a second. Is she going to be the character? I'm trying to say it without spoiling in case they don't reveal it here. But is she going to be a certain mother figure to Claudia? I don't know what he sees in him. It's not that attractive. And the no, shut up. Back in shabby hotel rooms and cold water walk ups. A new generation. We're about to have an issue here. You don't sound all that Chicago to me. Outside Chicago. We roamed all around. It's the emphasis on the second syllable. 
borrowed from the French. So, Let's not delve deeper into this. Or a buffoon. <laughs> Anything else you want to say, buffoon? If you want to act like fledglings, do it in darkness. I mean, your guy started it. I do feel like Louis being yeah, a bit salon. too always something brazen in there. with the things he's doing. Maybe before the war, more than Good that. reason you picked that one, Daniel. It's not Why? mine. That's Fred Stein. What's going on? Probably Rashid confused them. You told a girl you don't need to do her. What is your game, dude? This is embarrassing. Whoa. I was thinking I was trying to pass them off as mine. What's going on? Can I get some aspirins? <laughs> Can I take a break? I'm freaking out. And then the song came back again. Oh, he. I should kill whoever wrote it. And it's fucking Gordon Parks, fella, you put in front of me? God, Let's start. Three or four days with folks. Tell me one thing wrong about this photo. Well, for one thing, I'm not in it. You would say that. You would. That's cute, but uh, I know you're up to some shit. I don't know when. Now I'm a traitor. A slut. It's fun being a slut. I do not enjoy using my powers like that, Louis. Seemed like you did. That was for curving discipline for the situation, and if I may, you were wound rather tightly after Santiago's probing. I guess that's a fair point. I'm not the start, Louis. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm manipulative and weird in my own fucked up way. He was rescued from a brothel when he was 15. The parents that sent him to work on a merchant boat in Delhi when in actuality they had sold him into slavery. I served him with all my heart. It's amazing how even after knowing that that's, that's your backstory, I still don't like you. I was occasionally donated. That's really screwed up. I still don't like you. One dark thing after another. Maybe I seek it out. Maybe I chase after it. I don't think that's true. Or at least not entirely. I'm leaving a trail. I'm Gretel. You're making this very difficult for Claudia. Most in my position would treat you no better than you treated your maker. Oh. Oh, shit. Or join your maker in oblivion. <laughs> I think you just need to calm down. You're lashing out. Except he just threatened me with it. Well, it doesn't sound like him. Doesn't well, he did. Like... Oh, I forgot. Love makes you stupid. You and him. Him and you. You and fucking him. Picked another one over me. You uh. COVID. Nah, I'm with Claudia on that one, Louis. I'm... A million percent with Claudia there. Love does make you stupid as hell, dude. What are you about to do? I'm not exactly sure how they achieved this, but it's kind of neat how Lestat here isn't getting wet from the rain. Nice little detail that he's not really there. There isn't going to be a hunt, is there? Why this suit? It's my favorite on you. Well, it's quite nice, I suppose. Herring bone wool. It's just color. bleeding away like a painting. So your name would always create Even as he fades away, still trying to manipulate Louis. Just that last little bit. And when they know. They don't have an alternative. They'll oh you back. dear. And that's where you can decide if you want it back. You made me look foolish. You just assume it was me. Well, it wasn't me. You sure about that? No. Excuse me? I take it back. Take Is it that back. what makes you fascinating? Come on, stay with it. Stay with it. 
Show me what happened. Don't be afraid. Things got a little heated. With a boy. Things got heated with a boy. I was at home picking. No, you cannot seriously end it like that. There's. <laughs> Tell me what's going on there. Come on. A very interesting episode here. It's one that almost feels incomplete with how abrupt the ending is. But overall, it seems to be about blossoming relationships. Like Armand and Louis finally get over this awkward will they won't they like really go for it phase and louis fully embraces armand i did quite like the scene where lestat is fading away because to me that was just louis letting go of that fantasy of lestat and genuinely trying to move on from that point forward and at the same time you have claudia starting to develop some sort of relationship with this other woman again if it's who i think it is in the movie uh this is who becomes like a a mother to her i can't tell if it's supposed to be that character or not i'm if i was if i was a betting man which i am not i would say it is her and uh this is the woman that's going to kind of careen claudia down the rest of her storyline and it's interesting to see them interact because outwardly it seems kind of like they hate each other. But I think it's their disdain for one another. Or at the very least, their disdain for people's bullshit and then seeing that neither of them are really bullshitting one another. It just brings them closer together. They're like, huh, this other person's actually all right. I'm very, very curious to see how that's all going to play out. Especially now that Claudia has been banned from ever seeing her again, which we all know she's going to, and there's more than likely going to be consequences for that. I mean, she's certainly not feeling as at home in the coven anymore. Not only has she had to perform this play that, as she said, just constantly reminds her of the permanent issue that she has being stuck as a child for forever, but Armand has straight up threatened her, said that he knows the truth, and again has said you can't see that woman ever again. Which I imagine all of these things combined are a real problem for Claudia. I also really want to know what Santiago's gonna do with the information that he now has. I mean, Louis was telling Armand just, you know, give him the power, watch him fail, see what happens. But will he fail and what will happen now that he knows the truth about what happened to Lestat? I don't know, I imagine it's not going to be good, <laughs> whatever it is. And just as a side note, I really enjoyed getting Armand's backstory about like the horrific abuse that he suffered uh, growing up and at the hands of his master before finally being turned. It makes sense why he's such an insecure person and why he does rely on those manipulation tactics when he himself does not even want the job that he has right now as the coven leader. But as I said, uh, I don't care. <laughs> I still don't like the guy. I, I really despise his whole personality. If I'm being perfectly honest, he drives me crazy. Fantastic character. I hate him. And I just want to know what it is he's hiding from both Louis and Malloy about that night of the original interview. I'm trying to piece it together and figure it out ahead of time, but I genuinely can't. I'm like, I don't, I have no idea what is um, on the horizon for that storyline. And I'm sincerely hoping that the next episode is the one to give me those answers. I'll give this episode an 8.3 out of 10. Another very solid episode, really enjoyed it, a little bit more than I enjoyed the previous episode. But I am genuinely frustrated with how very abrupt the ending was. And I do think the pacing is still a little off here. There are certain moments that go on a little longer than I think they need to, other moments where I feel we could use just a little bit more time to digest the information. So not perfect, but really enjoyed the episode. 
very much so. And more than ever, like, I gotta know what's going on in the modern day storyline with these memories and flashbacks. Like, what happened that night? I, I got to know. <laughs> so fingers crossed, the next episode is going to answer those questions for me. I will see you all there. And that's about it.